It is time to break out the big boy weight. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our continuing live coverage of the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games live from the Step Up Center in Carson, California. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Bill Grundler, and we are ready for the eighth of 12 scored events, the clean and jerk ladder. And Bill, after seven events, look how tight things are at the top of the leaderboard. It is so cool to see the the the, the race this close. This is exactly what everyone's hoping for. It's great to see Rich moving up. It's great to see Jason at the top. It's great to see some new names in there like Eric Fisher. He is doing amazing so far during this weekend. This is our first pure strength event of the competition. It's a clean and jerk ladder. Every 90 seconds, you move to a weight that was 10 pounds heavier than the one you just did. The key here, the men had to choose their starting weights on Thursday, and they had four weights from which to choose. 225 pounds, 255 pounds, 285, or 315. Now what's up? You have to hit your first weight here. You have to clean and jerk your first weight in order to move on, not only in this event, but in the competition. So if you fail on the weight you choose, you are out. And the crazy thing about making that decision early is you didn't get to feel any of the volume that you had leading up to this event. It's night, everyone has their, their max clean and jerk up to this, but it's usually a day that they got to rest and everything before that to set up for it. They have now gone through these couple days of just an onslaught of work. Now they have to do that, that heavy weight. So that decision could be very, very important to the rest of their career for this, this competition. And to that point, there are plenty of athletes in the field who have their max clean and jerk listed well above 300 pounds who are starting at 285. We saw this in the regional competition with that triple overhead squat max effort. Some people on their first attempt did not make it and did not survive in the competition. So right now it's Orlando Trail at the 285 pound bar, Ryan Swobody at 255 and Gary Helmick at 225 and Trail at 285 pounds on a Latin America. That is no problem for him. Not even a problem. You know, and that's a good thing. I think start, even though he has his, he, he's listed his, his max at 335, I think it's a good way for him to start at. Let him build into it a little bit. Don't risk it. Again, he wants to stay in the competition. He got knocked out last year with the swim. So he wants to continue through here. Another look at Orlando's lift at 285 pounds. The only thing I would have said on that is his arms were a little bent. In our world, what we say is you bend your arms, you're losing power. Uh, maybe that's just kind of help position that bar a little bit better on his hips, but you know what, a nice easy lift for him. The men advance in 10 pound increments. There are four rows of barbells out there. You can only advance to the end of your row. So if you're Gary Helmick and you started at 225 pounds, the heaviest you can go is 315, and that's actually the starting weight on the fourth and final ladder. You know, this is a lot different than what you'll see in a lot of the regular type gyms when you're going for your one rep maxes. You know what, just take 90 seconds. You just kind of go around, talk to everyone to get a drink of water. These guys have just 90 seconds between a start and into the next lift. So they're told when to move. They're told when they have to go. They have to increase their weight, and that's increasingly difficult. You know, you get in there four or five reps. That's a lot of weight you're moving around. Orlando Trail moves up to 295. Ryan Swoboda moving up to 265. Again, Orlando's got that heavy pull with his arms. And but Trail, a great no problem. Serve. No problem with 295 for Orlando Trail. Now Swoboda at 265, and that's a good lift for Ryan Swoboda. Gary Helmick was also able to clear 235 pounds. Orlando Trejo, he's, he, again, he has a, f a great clean. Uh, again, that slight bend in the arms is a little strange. You don't usually see most of the athletes doing that, but what's really helping him is that jerk. That jerk is solid. Nice dip and drive with his hips, and when that bar gets up overhead, he catches it locked arms, no bobble in his arms at all. That's going to that's gonna bode well for him in the, in the heavier weights. Orlando Trejo currently lifting the heaviest weight out there on the ladder behind him in the white. It's Mike McGoldrick getting set to step up to the 285-pound bar as Trejo moves up to 305. They have 80 seconds to make the lift and then a 10 second transition period. So again, they need to be able to conserve themselves enough to get into that next, you know, moving into that next platform. So Trejo up to 305, McGoldrick to 285. 
Ryan Swobody on your right. He's at 275 pounds. Trail on the left. He's at 305. Uh, little bobble out of the hole there. You know what? As long as he has a good, really good front squat, that's not too much of an issue. Swobody looking smooth at 275. Trail at 305. That was Swobody solid. struggling at 275 and could not stabilize it, but he does have a chance now to make another attempt. You do get a partial score for successfully cleaning the weight. So if Swobody does not complete the clean and jerk here, he will leave the field with a score of 275.1. I think that's a really good thing for these athletes to be able to have that little extra set in there. That little extra point to get, you know, to get credit for that. That's important. Swobody, one more attempt at 275, and he can't Just can't lock one. out those arms. Again, when you get that weight up overhead, you don't want that weight to bobble at all. You want to catch it when it's weightless. So a nice dip and drive and locking those arms out and keeping that stabilized, not just with the locked elbow, but at the shoulders as well. you got to keep that upper torso tight. Orlando Trail at 305. Again, you know what? For him, I think he's actually, now that I see what he's doing, he's, he's hitting that bar right up at the pockets. That's why he has that slight bend. He's working well, and his, his jerk is perfect. That was really pretty. Trejo moving up to the 315-pound bar. Behind him is Mike McGoldrick. McGoldrick at the 295-pound bar. And then behind Mike McGoldrick, Austin Maliallo stepping onto the floor. He's in the pink shirt behind Mike McGoldrick in the white. the left at 265 pounds. Oh, almost that had that. Forrest at 265, while Trejo's going to make another run at 315. Now, Orlando Trejo, you know what? He, he has a good front squat, so I think he feels confident trying to bounce out of the bottom like that. But if you get loose at the bottom and you allow that, that that spine to curve and round, all of a sudden you, your, your joints all kind of roll in on themselves. You lose that stability. You don't have the ability to bounce out of there. Trejo, one more go at 315 pounds. And he cannot get underneath it. Orlando Trejo looking like he's going to lead the ladder with a score of 305.2. At 305 pounds is the last successful lift that he had. Here's Trejo's miss the first time he touched the bar. You can see, uh, you can see he had that round in the upper back and his hips came underneath him, underneath, uh, underneath his hips. Just wasn't enough, to, it's stable enough to come out. But his second attempt, yeah. his third attempt, he still can't get it. So Orlando Trejo will leave the ladder after a successful list at 305 pounds. So he is currently your leader. There's Mike so McGoldrick now so up to 295. Many, there's so many body position points that have to happen to have a real strong lift. And you can feel it. You, you, you miss one of those body points, your elbows drop, get a little loose in the bottom, loosen the shoulders. The lift will feel literally 20 pounds different. So it's, a, it's all a matter of staying tight and staying perfect in your form all the way through. Zach Forrest on the left at 275. Mike McGoldrick wow. at 305 pounds. That's a good lift. And Forrest at 275. Alex Steady at 265 in the yellow shirt behind Forrest. A successful lift for him. Marcus Philly also out there, as is Eric McGee. Huge crowd on hand here at the soccer stadium at the Step Up Center. The first time since we've moved to this facility that we have used the soccer stadium for events. And this place is still filling up. They're in the upper deck, they're in the lower bowl. We expect 24,000 plus on hand for the 2013. Reebok CrossFit Games and this evening it's going to be pandemonium when we move inside of the tennis stadium. Alex Netty just completed the lift at 265 pounds. So Alex Netty's taking a rest right here, but you'll see it different. At least on that last lift, he did what's called a power clean, not going down into a full squat. Now, if he has the strength to do that, that's great because it actually saves his legs a little bit. But once you get into the heavier weights, the problem with that lift is that you have to get that weight up a lot higher. So with the squat clean, you don't have to bring up the weight as high, you squat down underneath it, but you know, why waste your legs if you don't need to? Let's see if he does that here on this, on this weight. Alex Netty moving up to 275. In front of him, Zach Forrest is on the 285 pound bar. On the right is Mike McGoldrick. He's at 315 pounds. Behind him is Austin Maliallo at 305. Behind Maliallo, Eric McGee at 295 pounds. Mike McGoldrick's going to stand up 315 pounds. 
Zach Forrest hits 285, McGoldrick hits 315, and Nettie gets 275. Again, Alex Nettie, all he had to do was a power clean. He popped that up so easily. Again, saving his legs for some of the heavier weights. Mike McGoldrick, that was an impressive lift. He looks solid on the front squat. Jerked it no problem. He's got a couple more in the, in the tank for sure. Gary Helmick just hit 275 pounds. McGoldrick, that was just a PR for him. His last listed PR on this lift, 310 pounds for the former hockey player from Middle Tennessee State University. You know, that's exactly what you want to do is hit your PRs when you come in here to the games. It's impressive and it blows my mind every single year when you have guys that do that after they've gone through everything that they just went through the last couple days. Yeah, let's remind everybody, these guys are not lifting fresh. They've already no. been through seven events, one this morning. Now Asia Bartow, one of the biggest athletes in this competition at 200. 25 pounds, Barto is on the field starting at the 285 pound bar. Now again, AJ has a listed record of 340 pounds, but I'm thinking that he's gonna go ahead and again, build, him, build a little bit of momentum as he gets up on the platforms. Asimaliala at 315, the Golder can't get 325 on the left, is Zach Forrest at 295 pounds behind him, Alex Netty in the yellow at 285. Osmaliolo just unable to get that jerk. Didn't get underneath the bar. Pressed it out in front of him. Wasn't able to get underneath it. Zach Forrest oh. needs to oh, they're off it. the platform, but he gets back on. Oh. They're not going to count the lift. Wow. They're not going to count the lift for Zach Forrest. He did get a successful clean. He has a chance to do it again, though. But Goldrick now at 325, trying to set yet another PR. Wow. Mike McGoldrick, 325 pounds. He is your leader. Not even needing to use a real deep squ uh, split on that. It was a narrow, narrow split. Usually we'll see guys split really wide so they can get deep quickly. Didn't even need to do that. He jumped it up so high. Maliallo at 315, still trying to complete that lift. Now Zach Forrest, another go at 295 pounds. He was able to get it overhead, but he came off of the platform. You cannot do that. So now uh, Forrest unable to get it, but he will get partial credit for his last lift. 295.1 for Forrest, but this man, Mike McGoldrick, 325. So solid. Look at that drive out of the hole. He, this doesn't look at all like it's a PR. Not even, I mean, he, he could have gone a lot deeper. He has a couple more lifts in him with that. All he has to go down is a little bit deeper, a little bit more speed on that drop, and he's going to get a couple more lifts out of it. Matt Chan is on the floor, 285 pounds for the man who finished second at the games last year. Textbook lift for Matt Chan. McGoldrick at 335, oh, trying to get out of the oh, hole. He just can't wow. quite stand it up. Behind him is Eric McGee at 315 pounds. And now it's Alex Nettie at 295. Uh, see, that right there is a problem with a power clean versus a squat clean. He has to get down underneath it. With Alex Netty, he's not the best at his front squats. You know that, that that's a little bit of a weakness. So he's doing everything he can to avoid that. You actually saw his feet start to split. But you know what? Alex Netty, the cool thing about this guy, when he was at the regionals, he had all he had a different outfit for every single workout that he did. And I think he's the only guy out here right now. Looks like an old school Chuck, Chuck Taylor Converse right there. Meanwhile, Mike McGoldrick can't get 335, so McGoldrick PRing, but can't set another one. And now it's Nettie at 295 again, and he just can't power clean that thing up there, so Alex Nettie will be done as well. And McGoldrick, nothing left as he goes for 335 one more time. So a PR for Mike McGoldrick, and he will lead the field as your leader right now. And Mike McGoldrick with that bloody shin, and a lot of people who train at CrossFitter. Very familiar with Very that. Very familiar with that. You know what all that means is that he's been keeping that bar nice and close to his shins, which all of his trainers would want him to do. So uh, it looks bad, but it's, you know, he's doing the right thing. 295 pounds for Marcus Philly. And now Eric McGee on the right at 325. Behind him at 315 is Daniel Tominski. McGee out of the hole at 325. And a good lift for Eric McGee at 325. Wow. Meanwhile, Daniel Tominski could not get 315 locked out. Marcus Philly just successfully lifting 295 pounds. Now he came in with a listed 325 pound PR. Started at 255, so again, I'm not sure if he was worried about the volume of the weekend coming in, 
Uh, he moved that easily. So let's see how much further he can get. Right here, Daniel Tominski, he needs to start getting some heavy lifts in there. Dan needs to start making his way back up the leaderboard. He's done a lot of work with a lot of Olympic, uh, Olympic, co Olympic, Olympic lifting coaches, um, and this is not what he needed. 315 is just not going to happen for Daniel Tominski, so he will leave the ladder. Now Asia Bartow, who just got 305, will move up to the 315-pound bar. Matt Chan is behind him as is 2010. Games champion Graham Holberg, and now Dan Bailey getting set to step up to the 285 pound bar. A crazy with Dan Bailey last year in the clean ladder, just a straight clean ladder, he pulled 345 pounds. I've seen him on videos, I talked to him a little bit earlier. He said that going overhead is where he has issues. So he may be able to clean a lot of weight, it's where he goes overhead is where he has, starts having some issues. Bailey power cleaning 285 and easily overhead for Dan Bailey. Tell you what, what he moves with a lot of just raw ability is pretty impressive. Ah, he saw his elbow start to drop. That rounded his back, got him up on his toes. Weight went down. All it takes is all it takes is inches for that to happen. McGee's gonna make another go at 335 pounds. Behind him, cooling down with a towel on his head, Asia Barto, who just cleared 315 pounds. Smart move, I think, just saving his legs. You know, saving his legs until the next lift. Eric McGee, who finished third at the Northeast Regional. Wow, you see right there, Eric actually started rounded from the beginning. All of his trainers, I'm sure, would be saying, put your shoulders back, tighten up that upper spine so you're nice and tight before you go into that first pull. He started rounded, he went through that whole movement rounded. Eric McGee leaving the field after successfully lifting 325 pounds, and now Asia Barto is your lead man on the ladder, stepping up to the 325 pound bar. Behind him is Matt Chan, behind Chan, Graham Holmberg. On the left, Marcus Philly, 315. Barto, no problem at 325. Wow, not even a rest. The greatest thing about that right there, is a lot of these guys, they get the weight in that front rack position and they sit. They try to recuperate themselves, they try to, try to take a nice big breath. All which Asia did, but he didn't He didn't have that time under tension. Get the bar to your shoulders, take a breath, get it up overhead, get out from underneath it. Just rest, that, that'll allow you to recover for the next lift. Marcus Philly gonna make another go at 315. Asia Barto, here's a look at that lift at 325. Perfect form out of that first pull. Butt stayed down, his chest is up nice and tall. And a lot of speed moving back down underneath the bar for that split. Probably still could have gone down a little bit quicker just so he's not catching it without any bend in his arm at all. But uh, that was a strong, solid lift. Asia Barto out of Behemoth CrossFit in Katy, Texas. 6'5", 200. 20 pounds. Of course he would name the gym after himself, the behemoth. You gotta be a behemoth if you're working out with Asia. Barto getting set to move up to the 335 pound bar. As Wes Pyatt has now stepped onto the ladder and he successfully cleaned the clean and jerk 285 pounds. Marcus Philly exiting the field after missing his lift at 295 pounds. Make that 315 pounds for Marcus Philly. And that's where Miko Arlenbaugh steps up. Asia Barto, 335. See him adjusting his hands there to get that grip on that bar. Solid. No problem for Asia Barto. He's your new leader. And on the left, Miko Arlenbaugh, 315 pounds. Matt Chan behind Barto at 325. Chan gets out of the hole. Now can he jerk the weight? That right there was a solid, solid jerk. You saw how wide he went with his feet, but he dropped into a fully straight locked arm position and was able to be stable underneath the weight and allow him to get that weight. That was beautiful, beautiful jerk. Arlenpott, 315, failed on the jerk, but he did get the clean, so he will make another run at this weight. Again, these guys aren't getting a whole lot of time. If you miss it, all, all we've really really been able to see is someone just get the clean after that. They barely get into that. So time goes quickly for these guys. Arlenpott just nothing left in the tank to go after that weight. So he'll have a score of 315.1. He's gonna make another attempt though. He already has a successful clean here. Gets under that and now Arlenpott's gonna stand it up. Ah, 
Again, just a I'll little bit too slow. Yeah. So 315.1 from Miko Arapapa. Let's go back and take a look at Matt Chan. Solid clean off the ground. Look at that, driving his hips up underneath. Again, adjusting his grip so he can get a nice drive on the bar. Solid, solid lockout with his arms. That was pretty. A pretty textbook lift right there. Asia Bartow, meanwhile, 345 pounds there for Bartow. So that right there is five pounds over his listed clean and jerk PR. So, and, and he, he just looks so solid with that. The thing with Asia, a lot of people think that because you're tall and long, you're not gonna be able to move a whole lot of weight. That it takes too hard, you gotta move it too long. But he defies all those, all those rumors. He's so efficient and uses that momentum to get underneath that weight going up and getting under it. Brian Miller, 315, couldn't get it overhead, but he does complete the clean. So Miller will get 315.1, and now it's Matt Chan at 335. And Chan cannot get out of the hole on that one, but he will get a chance to make another attempt. Behind him is Graham Holmberg at 325 pounds. Holmberg just can't quite get underneath it. Now Chan, another attempt at 335. And it's just not going to happen for Matt Chan. So Chan leaving the ladder after successfully clean and jerky 325 pounds, but Asia Barto just throwing weight around here. So solid. You know, he hits that bar up high on his thighs. And again, I think what's working best for him is he doesn't wait. Gets it up, stabilize, go. There's, not, there's no hesitation at all. 355 pounds for Asia Barto. On the right, on the left at 315 is Tyson Takasaki. Strong front squat out of the hole for Tyson. Good lift. And an easy Tyson stand, Takasaki. an easy turn. And Asia Barto at 355. Can't quite get under it, but Asia Barto made that clean look pretty easy. Yeah, you know, he's used to being under a lot of weight. You know, he does a lot of work with Olympic lifting with his clean and jerk, with his snatch. That front squat was easy, but you could tell the second he went, he went a little bit loose up top. That breath, tried to go too soon, really needed another breath of air. Tried to take a big breath and he just didn't have it. Just kind of collapsed, collapsed in that midline. Barto with time for another attempt here. He already has a successful clean. So right now his score would be 355.1 and he would be your leader. Asia Barto can't stand that one up. So Asia Barto, Leaving the floor after successfully cleaning 355 pounds, but just couldn't put it overhead. So Barto now in the lead. And here's his first attempt. Uh, so easy on that front squat. That was impressive. See, I think he just needed it. He needed to sit there for just a second. He needed to wait just a little bit longer. And then he would have been a little bit more solid. That would have helped up with the split. It just would have been a better lift. But that was a very, very impressive showing so far. Asia Barto. Signing his scorecard, and now it's Dan Bailey moving up to 335 pounds on the left. Tyson Takasaki at 325 pounds. Tyson Takasaki, successful lift for him, and Bailey can't get underneath 335. Wes Pyatt is behind Dan Bailey at 325. Behind Pyatt is Kenneth Leverage. At 305, that's Roy Gamboa. Dan's trying to get the crowd fired up right now. Again, Dan pulled that real big clean last year. He needs to get this weight up overhead. Bailey can't get underneath it right behind Bailey. West Pyatt can't get underneath 325 behind Pyatt. Kenneth Leverage now has 315 racked. West is right up at his PR right there at 325. He's cleaned successfully 325, and he has jerked 325. He's never actually had a full clean and jerk at 325. So the fact that he's there after all this volume, that, that's impressive for Wes. Kenneth Leverage is going to go again after 315. Bailey at 335 just can't get it. Leverage had 315 rack, but didn't go for the jerk. Leverage uh. can't quite get it overhead, but he will get partial credit 315.1. For Kenneth Leverage, Wes Pyatt is also out, as is Dan Bailey. So that round knocking off three men from that middle, that third ladder. And now Tyson Takasaki, 335 pounds. Nice drive of his hips right there. He never lost midline. His elbow stayed up nice and hard, keeping that bar right up against his throat. 
Takasaki nicely underneath, oh, but just give can't it to stabilize. Him? Kyle Kasperbauer now is at the 315-pound bar behind Kasperbauer. Neil Maddox at 305 basically pressed that overhead. <laughs> Now I think you need to practice that. Absolutely. Drilled afterwards. Drilled after the case. After the fact. Casper Bauer at 315. Almost a power clean on that. He decided just to dip down just a little bit to come out of the bottom. Almost didn't look like he even needed to do that. Takasaki can't hit 335, but Casper Bauer a successful lift at 315 pounds. But Tyson Takasaki will leave the floor after successfully lifting 325 pounds. More time though for Tyson Takasaki, but doesn't look like he's going to make another go at it unless he's just going to rest. And time has been called, so Tyson Takasaki is done inside the soccer stadium here at the Stubham Center for the first time since we moved to this facility. And look at the crowd on hand. Lucas Parker, one of two men who's going to start at 315 pounds. You know what? This it, it's, it's risky. It's risky. He's only listed a 333 clean and jerk best. So he needs to get this to even stay in the competition for the rest of the weekend. 315 for Lucas Parker is no problem. Solid right there. That was a great lift. The crowd appreciating that effort from Lucas Parker. If he doesn't make that lift, he is out. Roy Gamboa on the left at 325. And that's a good lift for Roy Gamboa, who now has two platforms left before he clears his ladder. But this is really showing, I think, that it's great for a lot of CrossFitters when they go to their boxes you know, around the world. A lot of people try to do the split, and they kind of do this sort of half split. They don't really do it. He needs the, everyone else. Is, all these guys are splitting and meaning to split. It's a, it's a, you're either going to do it or you're not. You can see all these athletes are doing that, and that's what's helping them get that lift. Lucas Parker stepped on the ladder at 315, one of two men to start at that weight. Big risk for him, but he made it pay off. Chad McKay, meanwhile, at 285 pounds, and the big Australian gets that overhead. Here's Lucas Parker at 315. Check out the crowd's reaction. Look at that. Perfect form out of the hole. Backstage nice and straight. Head through the hole. That's what a lot of athletes will hear the coaches say. That gets their shoulders underneath that bar to support that weight. 325 now for Lucas Parker. On the left, Neil Maddox, also at 325 pounds. Behind Lucas Parker is Matt Hathcock, another athlete opening at 315. Crucial lift for him. Parker. Neil Maddox can't get under it, but he doesn't have to reclean it. He does not have to reclean it. Make another attempt, and Neil Maddox cannot successfully get 325 pounds overhead. Now, what that was was a squat jerk. He's trying to get underneath it that way instead of splitting his legs. You actually see it, saw him. And there's only one real big lifter that we really see do that is Cedric Phillip, uh, Cedric Harrison. When he splits, he actually goes down into a full squat clean. So he's all the way down. Neil couldn't do that. <laughs> I think if he was to split, he's fast enough, he's strong enough, and that's a more efficient movement by splitting to get underneath for that uh, for that jerk. Maddox is going to make one more run at this. 325 pounds for Neil Maddox. Maddox is not, not fast enough. Get that overhead. He needs to have speed on that jerk. Here's a look at his first attempt here where he actually made two attempts at the jerk. So the dip drive, it's about getting underneath it and snapping that bar off the shoulders. He's just not going down fast enough and deep enough to, to catch that bar with locked arms. Now Lucas Parker at 335 pounds. On the left is Z.A. Anderson at 325 and Matt Hathcock at 325 as well behind Parker. And who even caught that for Hancock and C.A. Anderson struggling at 325. That was actually falling backwards as he went underneath it. He came so far with his head underneath that actually the bar was going to go behind him. He was able to pull it back. That's and that's great. Being that heavy, you don't have those those sort of abilities. Ben Stoneberg is at 325 as well. 
And there's Z.A. Anderson, another run at 325. Anderson has it on his shoulder. Successful jerk for Anderson. If he can stabilize nice it, he nice stays job. alive. You can see how fast that was compared to Neil Max. It was a little bit more of a deliberate down and up. That was a snapping off of his shoulders, allowing him to get underneath the bar. Z.A. Anderson now will move up to the 335-pound bar. Take a listen to Lucas Parker. That is an angry Canadian right there. That is an angry Canadian. He willed that weight up and scared it and said, you will go up. Lucas Parker is so great to watch. He's just, he's so, he, I mean, for lack of a better word, he's so animated. 3.45 to tie Asia Park though, for Lucas Parker. I think, I think honestly, I think honestly between Luke Parker and Matt Hathcock, we have a, a, a screaming match on that last row. Both of them are yelling back and forth at the bar. Now Z.A. Anderson at 335. There's some big weight getting thrown around here. In event number eight, the clean and jerk ladder, the eighth of 12 sport events here at the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games. Anderson just can't get underneath that one to get himself out of the hole. Daniel Petros right behind Z.A. Anderson at 325. And now Frederick Aguidius at 325, and that's not going to happen for Frederick. Anderson, another attempt at 335. Just not strong in the hole, not able to stay, that, keep that midline nice and tight. Elbows are dropping just a touch. But if you want to look at a classic textbook way to lift, Lucas Parker. Impeccable form. He's moving and up beer. to the 355 pounds. Matt Hathcock still alive behind him. Chad McKay on the left at 325. Lucas Parker for the overall lead now at 355 pounds. Wow, that front squat out of the hole was easier than the last one. He came out so solid. but he does get the clean. So he is your new leader at 355.1. Now it's Chad McKay at 325, the big Australian. Wow. Wow, so big, so strong. His father was a former rugby player for Australia. And Chad McKay will get that lead nice. over head. So 325 for Chad McKay. Lucas Parker still has a little time if he wants to make a run at 355 again. Behind him at 345, Matt Hathcock. Wow. Hathcock can't get underneath that. Now Lucas Parker already has the clean here. He's already the leader. He hits the clean and jerk here. He moves to 365. Wow. Cannot get underneath it. But, but you know, Lucas Parker is still your overall leader. Full commitment on that split. That's what I'm talking about, about a deep split. Getting as low as you can underneath that bar, because the lower you are able to go, the lower you, or the higher. You don't need to push the bar up as high to get underneath it. But that's commitment. When you saw Chad McKay, when he did his, he actually caught the bar with bent arms. So that's a difference right there that, that something that's going to hurt Chad as he gets up and continues on those heavier weights. 265, that's Albert Dominique LaRouche behind him, Jordan Troyan, but the lead man on the ladder now is Chad McKay at 335 pounds. Again, let's see how deep Chad can come out underneath his jerk. Doesn't seem to have too much of a problem on the uh, on the clean part, especially that front squat. So strong out of the hole, solid. But here's where he really needs to take a deep split and go down as quick as he possibly can. That right there, he tried to push himself down instead of really shooting himself down to the, uh, um, underneath it. McKay will get 335.1. Justin Allen with a successful lift that he will await the next bar as he is two back of Chad McKay. One more attempt for Chad McKay. 
and he's out of gas. Marcus Hendren, there he is again. Fifth place out of the, the craziest region that we have. Five people coming out of the region. All five of those people were in the top 10 last year coming out of the games. Just barely making it here, but is doing just amazing so far this game. He's having a great showing. Albert Dominic LaRouche on the left, the 275 on the right. Justin Allen at 325 pounds. And Scott Panchik right behind him at 315. Hendrick, no wow. problem there wow. at 285. Yeah. That was, that was an easy lift. That was a warm-up lift right there. Now, last year at the games, he was able to pull up 355 pounds in the cleans. Didn't necessarily have the best form, but just horsed the weight up. He just has that farmer, that farm boy strength. Justin Allen again at 325 pounds. Wow. Allen again, that one up there. That, that's a split power clean. Justin Allen cannot stabilize it, almost had it, but just saw that bend of his elbows and could not stabilize the weight overhead. Again, Justin is so strong. You can see what he can do. I mean, he basically tried to push all that up all by himself. Uh, really uh, didn't have any form with that at all. Didn't get underneath the bar on his clean. Didn't split the right way, you know, split his legs sideways. And just didn't get underneath that bar, that bar quick at all. The man who has back-to-back -back victories. Josh Bridges, who moved from 11th to 5th after event 7, is now entering the ladder. Albert Dominic LaRouche at 285 pounds. On the right is Scott Panchik. Good lift for LaRouche. Now Panchik at 325. Big heave of the bar there from Scott Panchik. 325 power clean. And Panchik will hit Solid. 325 pounds. Hendren, no problem at 295. And again, I think these are just a couple warm-up sets for him. He knows what he can clean. Jerk may be a little bit different. Let's see where he can get up to. But again, how much warming up were they able to do back in the bullpen before they came out here? It's also a little different to come out into this gigantic stadium and lift in front of, you know, 20,000 people. The man who currently sits in fourth place overall, Ben Smith, he will start at 285 pounds. Ben Smith, even though he's been he's one of the younger athletes, what he's known for is his snatching and his clean and jerks. He's real, he, if you look at him, he doesn't seem like he'd be such a power horse, but he is so strong and his form is so impeccable. And it, this right here is the games that he was hoping he had last year. He's really making a, a, a run back at that podium. Ben Smith just 63 points back of overall leader Jason Kaliba. Scott Panjic is currently the lead man on the ladder and Panchik now making a run at 335 pounds on the left out there. Dominique LaRouche at 295 and behind Dominique LaRouche, Jordan Troyan at 285. And Troyan failing at 285, Albert Dominic LaRouche good at 295. And now Panchik on the right at 335. Panchik cannot get that to his shoulders. Now Troyan one more chance at 285. He can't clean that weight either. So Jordan Troyan will lead the ladder after successfully lifting 275 pounds. Meanwhile, Josh Bridges hit 255, and he is still alive. Remember, if you don't hit your opening weight, you are out of the competition. Panchik making another run at 335. Scott Panchik actually got himself a coach in an actual box, so you know what? All that technique is really helping him out. He looks really good. And Panchik wow, on his second attempt will hit 335. That was impressive. Again, that speed underneath the bar and landing and catching solid. It's exactly what everyone wants to be doing when they're jerking. Jordan Troyan, one more attempt at 285 pounds. Just collapses underneath the bar. Again, it, it's about keeping tight, keeping all those all those joints tight. This is a new PR for Scott Panchik. Wow, with a power clean again. And he hits it. That jerk was solid. 
The fact that he's able to power clean right now is impressive because that just means he's going to be able to get up to those higher weights into that squat clean later. Now, Bear Dominique LaRouche, good lift at 305 pounds, and now Panchik with an attempt at 345 pounds in the PR after doing all of this, plus every event. Pretty incredible for Scott Panchik, trying to get the crowd fired up and behind him as he is setting up for his first attempt at 345 pounds. On the right is Marcus Hendren, Hendren at 315. And Marcus Hendrick gets that lift. Now Panchik at 345 pounds for a new personal best. Oh. Just can't quite get that weight stabilized and stand it up. Again, he needs to commit to that squat. If he's going to go the squat underneath like that, he has to commit, pull himself down quickly, and land in a solid, tight position. He can't, he can't just kind of go half and half on that. You have to commit to it. Panchik again at 345, and he just can't quite stand it up. Panchik has a successful lift at 335. If he can clean this weight, he'll get 345.1, but he still won't stay alive. But now Panchik exiting the ladder. And here comes the two-time defending CrossFit Games champion, Rich Froning. He currently sits in second place overall, and he is starting at 285 pounds. Now, Rich listed a PR of 370 pounds. And everyone's kind of wondering why he started off so light. You know, and I think the only thing we can kind of speculate is that he wants to warm up into those lifts. So, really no reason for him to go heavier than he needs to. Why put that extra strain on yourself? Lift a couple extra reps with some lighter weight. This is only just spec you know, spec speculating it, but uh, we'll see how high he goes with this. Now, Bear Dominic LaRouche failed at 315. Now, Hendren at 325, and a good lift for Marcus Hendren. That was a nice lift right there. Solid jerk. Quickly getting underneath that bar, catching it with locked arms. Nice tight midline. So now, Marcus Hendren is your lead athlete on the field. Albert Dominique LaRouche standing up 315 pounds. And he is unable to get it. So Albert Dominique LaRouche on his second attempt, still not able to get 315 pounds. But there's your lead athlete, Marcus Hendrick, getting set to move up to the 335 pound bar. Behind him, currently standing on the 305 platform, is Ben Smith. Behind Smith, Garrett Fisher. Behind Fisher, Rich Froning. They have 80 seconds to complete the lift and then a 10 second transition period. Marcus Hendricks setting up for 335 pounds. The end of that ladder is 375 pounds. No one has gotten past 355 yet. It's so right there, Josh Bridges. Look at his knees, basically naked right now. He came back from a catastrophic knee injury. No knee sleeves at all now. That's why, we, that's why we didn't see him last year, but he's pressing that weight, looking great. The other crazy thing about that is he didn't split that. That was a squat jerk. And that's not normally what you're gonna see. You're gonna see a split jerk. Marcus Hendren at 335. And just can't quite get that overhead. Ben Smith had a successful lift at 315. Fisher's good, as is Froning behind him. So Marcus Hendren, if he can't get this weight overhead, will leave the ladder. One more go now for Marcus Hendren at 335 as he goes back to the chalk bucket. Still some time left. He needs to hit this lift to stay alive on the ladder. Wow, again, almost a power clean on that. And now your overall leader, Jason Khalifa, is on the ladder. And Khalifa has already cleared 285 pounds. And he will move up to the 295-pound bar. So he knows exactly where Rich Froning's records are on this. So he has to do whatever he can to stay close to it. Doesn't want Rich to get too many points as he starts creeping his way up the, the leaderboard. Josh Bridges currently in fifth place on the left at 305. Solid lift, even without any knee sleeves or knee protection at all. Now watch his jerk. Bridges can't quite nope. get underneath that, but he will get partial credit for the clean. Now Ben Smith on the right at 325. Now Ben Smith, you know what? I think that's pretty smart of him. As he comes up and gets a little bounce, he's looking for a rebound into that jerk. 
I don't know if that would really work in like a USWA setting, but here as long as, it, as long as he gets that barb overhead, that's a good lift. That was smart. That was a pretty, pretty lift. Josh Bridges at 3.05. He's already cleaned it. Now he needs to complete it with a clean and then the subsequent jerk to stay alive. Bridges coming in in fifth place. The men he's chasing are on the heavier ladder. Bridges just can't quite stand that up. So Bridges looking like he's going to lead the ladder to the final score of 305.1. You know what, that's, that's not bad at all. Josh did really well in that last event. He needed that because you know the big boys were gonna be pushing a lot of weight here. That's still not too shabby for him. This event pretty much damage control for Josh Bridges. Ben Smith in front behind him. Garrett Fisher and Bridges just can't get 305, but does a good job on that ladder. Came in in fifth place overall. Remember, we have an event tonight that could be right in his wheelhouse inside the tennis stadium. Yep. Chance for him to get a third win of the competition. On the left, Rich Froning at 315. On the right, Ben Smith, 335. Rich Froning, no problem at all. But again, let's watch Ben Smith right when he comes out of the hole, going from his clean initially, I mean, just right into his jerk. He gets a little bounce on the bar and goes right into it. Garrett Fisher just hit 325. Uh, where you would see most people getting a split on his hands and readjusting their, their his grip. He goes right into the jerk after that. Lucas Parker liking that lift, as does his crowd, and Ben Smith now moving up to the 345-pound bar. Behind him is Garrett Fisher. Behind Fisher is Froning. Then finally, your overall leader, Jason Kalipa. Watch this. Talk about efficiency. I mean, strong. I don't even have any time to even say anything about it. He's moving so fast, and that's on the replay. Ben Smith, 335 pounds. Now Garrett Fisher, the man who came in in third place, just 28 points out of the top spot. He's a rookie. I mean, he's the but new he's kid on the block. Like no, not at all. He's so he's so poised in this position right now. Again training partners that he has, the people that he on a regular basis gets to work out with, is, I mean, nobody gets that opportunity. Yeah, you want to get talking about, you want to talk about getting thrown into the fire. I mean, he's out there with some of the biggest names in the CrossFit games. You got Ben Smith, you got Froning behind you, you got Kalipa. There's Froning at 325. Behind him is Jason Kalipa at 315. Fisher on the left of your screen behind Ben Smith at 335. He can't get that overhead. So now Ben Smith at 345 pounds. This is 25 pounds over his listed PR right now. So he's already PR'd himself today. Smith is out of the hole. The first time he stopped in between the, the clean and the jerk. Can't quite get underneath it, but partial credit for Ben Smith. 345.1. Still a super still impressive time. attempt. Yeah. Still some time here for Ben Smith. Garrett Fisher, he's going to exit the ladder. And if Ben Smith can't complete this lift, he will exit. He's already putting on the hat, so it looks like Smith's <laughs> day is done. I think he's, I think he's calling it a day. <laughs> so now the top two men. Still out on the ladder, Rich Froning and Jason Kalipa. Froning, all he needs to do here is just stay one ahead of Kalipa, and he's going to cut into that lead even more and get it down to single digits. Now, Jason has a little bit of an advantage on this because he actually gets to see how Rich does on each one of these lifts. He gets to see if he bobbles or if there's any struggling. Rich doesn't get to see that with Jason, though, unless he beats him to the lift. 335 is good for Froning, and now Kalipa at 325. And a good lift for Jason Kalipa. Two different techniques there. Yeah, it, you know, I just, it, it wasn't, the, Jason doesn't have the prettiest form in most things, but he's so strong, and he's been working on these things a lot. Again, it was a nice split. He really needs to have a much more powerful and explosive dip drive out of the hole. Froning in front. That picture perfect pretty much. And then behind him. So strong. Kalipa. So strong. I, again, not a very dramatic split. He needs to get underneath that weight a little bit more, go a little bit deeper with his split to catch that weight. 
Now Froning will move up to the 345 pound bar. Jason Kalipa's right behind him. Froney doesn't have to worry about winning this event. All he's got to worry about is just staying ahead of Jason Kalipa and taking another bite out of Kalipa's lead that is just 11 points coming into this eighth of 12 sport events, the clean and jerk ladder. The second of three events that will hold today. Daniel Petro looking on as the overall leaders. Move up 10 pounds. Now it's Kalipa at 335, Froning at 345. The crazy thing about Rich Froning, he doesn't have any sort of crazy setup. You saw Lucas Parker's long drawn out routine. Is Rich good. just grabs it and goes. Wow. And now Kalipa trying to match a PR and he slipped off the bar. So Froning now is in a really good spot to take over the lead from Jason Kalipa if Kalipa cannot get this lift. Now, depending how far Rich needs to go, he can really make up all his points right now. If he can get up past Lucas Parker, that is going to be deadly to Jason. These men are already towards the top, so if Brody finishes one ahead of Kalipa, it would just be five points difference, and Kalipa would hang on to the lead. Now, 335 for Kalipa as Brody looks off. Oh, sell right there with just the first press. Overhead. Again, there's not the dip drive and that dip that we're looking for after. There's no speed underneath the bar. Just trying to use those big shoulders and press that bar overhead. It's not going to work with this heavy of a weight. So Jason Kalipa did get the clean, so partial credit, 335.1 for him. And just one man will remain on the ladder unless Kalipa can make another run, but he does not have enough time to set up for another attempt. So Rich Froning moving up to 300. 55 pounds. Two men have cleaned it. Neither jerked it, though. That was Lucas Parker and Asia Barto. So now Rich Froding. Oh, wow. That was a little uncharacteristic right there of Rich. I think he just kind of jumped into it a little bit too fast. Sometimes it pays it to slow it down just a little bit. But he just didn't get that bar up high enough up on his chest. If Froding doesn't complete a clean here, he will only finish one ahead of Kalipa. And Kalipa will still remain at first. Oh! He goes the champ trying to get out of the oh. hole. He cannot do it. So Rich Froning will cut into Jason Kalipa's lead. It's going to be down to single digits. We'll await the official scoring, but it looks like Jason Kalipa will still remain in first place overall. The two men who have stood up with this weight are on the right. Froning is on your left. He just can't ah. stand it up. Being cheered on by Lucas Parker and Asia Barto. Froning still with some time, and he's going to make another attempt. He's the first guy to take four attempts at one weight. That's a lot in 80 seconds. Not going to happen for Froning. So 345.2 for Froning will be his final score, and those are the two men who got 355 on their shoulders and they will tie for first place. And the win in event eight, the clean and jerk ladder, the second of three events today. The third will be tonight in the tennis stadium and it's a repeat from the CrossFit Games of 2007, a 1,000 meter row followed by five rounds of 25 pull-ups and seven shoulder to overhead at 135. But first, the clean and jerk ladder in the books, Asia Parto, 355.1. Lucas Parker is second, and then Rich Froning finishing in third. Third place, Rich Froning, who finishes ahead of Jason Kalipa. You know, so strong. We, we're so used to seeing him do everything that he wants to do. It's so uncharacteristic to see him miss those at three at the uh, 355, but strong lifts before that. Real impressive. The tie for first was between these two, Asia Barto look, and Lucas Parker. Look at the height difference there. We have one of the shorter athletes at 5'7", Lucas Parker, to one of the tallest athletes with Asia Barto at 6'5". So when they'd say, which is it better, to be tall or short in Olympic lifting? I don't know. These guys just answered the question. It doesn't matter. Just do your thing. Lucas Parker finally getting a victory here. 
He was way back in the standings to start this event. Lucas Parker came in 37th overall, and he was a man as a veteran who has continued to move up the standings the past two years. He's been at the games, but he is on track for his worst finish. But Asia Barto and Lucas Parker helping their causes with a victory. And look at Rich Froning, who finishes way ahead of Jason Kalipa. That right there is, that's going to be detrimental to Jason. I mean, even though we had a lot of people that tied at seventh place, as long as Rich keeps moving, he's going to start eating up that lead, and that's exactly what he's doing. And he very well could have done it in this event. We're going to wait for the official results to update. But the tie for first, here it is. The Texas behemoth and the bearded Canadian. I mean, it's fun to watch Asia Litz. He's just so tall. Because he's so big, he moved, it looks like he's moving slow, but you can't beat the scream of, or the beard of Lucas Parker. That's Matt Hathcock behind him at 335. Both of them making a lot of noise on those lifts. <laughs> and look at this. Rich there Froning there has is. completed the comeback. He is now in first place by six points over Jason Kalipa. Josh Bridges dropping to seven, but still four events to go here. The barbells are going to be put away here at the stadium, and we're going to move into the tennis stadium. Stay with us. Live coverage from the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games continues.